Usually whenever I make a cut, I'm going straight through the bandsaw, but I have an upcoming project that really needs to have a stop on it. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can make a stop for your bandsaw. This has got a magnet on the bottom, and all it does basically is hold down to the surface and allow things from moving. So today, let's go ahead and make a bandsaw stop. I've got my block of wood here. Again, all the sizes are, are gonna be on the website. And I wanna map this out. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna find the center of this block, which is an inch and three quarters. I'm gonna use my marking jig here and I'll mark a line this way, all the way across, as well as this way. Our magnet's gonna go right in the center like this. And then these two blocks will fit parallel to the blade. Alternatively, you could always just use a square, draw a line this way, and then flip it and draw it the other way. That'll give you the exact center as well. Now I'm gonna set this to one and three eighths. And I'm gonna mark two lines right here, as well as right here. Now I can connect this point here to this point, as well as this point over here to this point down here. I'll set this to an inch and then I'll move it right across there like that. Before I do anything though, I wanna drill this hole out. I will be using a hole saw and it will be two and a half inches in diameter. When I drill this hole, I'm gonna start at the top and I'm only gonna go in about an inch. On the side that I made my circle, I added a line an inch away. So when I cut this, the inside circle should come out. and it'll go together like this. I still need to drill this all the way out. I'll make a quick studded knob with a 3 8 piece of walnut, and it's three inches by three inches. I connected the diagonals here. I'll use a compass set at an inch and a half so that I can get a rounded knob. I'm gonna add four holes in the center, and that's just so that I can spin it around with my finger. I think it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to do this. But I've set my radius at an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that now. I need to add a carriage bolt to the center of this. This is two inches. It's, it's gonna be a little bit longer than what I need, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. What I need to worry about is adding a hole that the carriage head will fit into, and I'm gonna use a 5 8 Forzner bit to do that. And then at each of these points, I'm gonna drill out with a 3 quarter inch Forzner bit. And with this done, I'll go ahead and pull that bolt into the back of the knob. I'll need to add a quarter inch T-nut, but I really don't wanna do it on the top. I'm gonna to put it through the bottom and then use screws to attach it. I'll use a 5 16 twist drill bit to enlarge that hole large enough that obviously I can get this in there. Go ahead and add my T-nut. And we'll just add a few screws around the sides. This is a little trick I picked up from Matthias Wandel a few years ago. Now this will just fit in like this, and then this will fit on top, and the magnet will fit on the bottom. There will be two nuts in the inside of this. I want this to sit flush to the bottom here with my knob all the way down like this. So I'll go ahead and add the nut, and then the magnet. It's not far enough down yet. And that should be good right there. But first I wanna cut this off below the magnet top. So we'll go ahead and cut this off now. We'll go ahead and attach the bolts into the knob. I wanna use a little bit of thread lock. And if you wanted to, you could just use a lock nut. Now I'll put this through the top here. I'll add my second nut. Go ahead and add my thread lock. I wanna add this again so that it's flush. I'll add a little bit more thread lock in here. And that works pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and add this. We'll glue it on. 
And then we'll glue the other pieces in the front like that. Now I can lower it down and that is a nice clamp. I'll go ahead and add a little bit of glue in the inside here. Then I can add a spacer to keep it all lined up. We'll come back in a few hours when this is dry. This works pretty good at not moving, at least the magnetic center, but I wanted to make it a little better. The outside spins because the wood doesn't have any friction to keep it in place. So I ground the bottom down a little with the disc sander. I probably took away about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, not a lot. We'll add some carpet runner to the bottom by first adding Mod Podge to the base and then to the carpet runner itself. Because there's not a lot to hold on to on the top, I used a piece of wood to stretch the pressure across the top and added clamps to the back. Once this is all dry, we can come back with a knife and cut on the inside of this. We also need to make sure that we cut the place where the blade is gonna slide into, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Let's take this over now and try it out. Works pretty good. I think that if I were gonna do this again, I would probably lower this a little bit lower. I did say about an eighth of an inch is what you could take off. I took off only a sixteenth of an inch and I don't feel like it goes down far enough. It works, but I might take the tracker runner off and actually go down a little bit farther because there is just a little bit of a gap. That's what I've got for you. Let me know in the comments down below what you think and thank you so much for watching.